Welcome back everybody to the Great Property Meet YouTube channel where we have today one of our previous past expert speakers, Mr. Mike Woods. And we're going to be discussing building regs, non-compliance, i.e. not getting a building uh, regs certificate, a completion certificate. It doesn't just apply to when you sell the building though, it could be a remortgage or uh, you might be wanting a building warranty, an NHBC. Uh, because you're converting a building to flats, for argument's sake, office to resi conversion, and you want the Help Dubai scheme to help you. So you need it in quite a number of different places to support what you're doing. No, it's very important. It's very important. Um, and and I, you know, I see no reason why people wouldn't get building regs involved. In fact, I just 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 the other week, I had a message from uh, an electrician that I've used in the past, and he said me he saw something I put out on social media, because I've done a, 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 a small video of my own based on building regs and warranties. So, so some people were confused about what's the difference between a building reg certificate and a warranty certificate. Um, and he messaged me, he said, oh, Mike, I did a loft conversion a few years back and I'm looking to sell the property now. And the purchaser's valuer has asked for a building regs completion certificate. And he said, I didn't get regs involved. He said, but I did the job properly. I put the right size joists in and I insulated it and I put the stairs in. I said, well, why didn't you get, well, I, I, was ne I, didn't, I didn't think I was going to sell the house. So I didn't really think I needed building regs. Well, well, why? I don't, I don't, I didn't get it. So does that come down to the I don't want to involve the local authority in what I'm doing? I don't know. But I, I just said, right, what I said, you, you know, I don't understand why you didn't. So he said, Well, what's my option? I said, Well, you could try and apply for a retrospective building regulations certificate, which would mean you going, you know, cap in hand to the building control office and say, well, I'm very sorry, but a few years ago, I did a loft conversion. Uh, I didn't think I needed to contact you, but uh, something has made me now need to come to you. Uh, and is it OK? Now, you know, they 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 they're OK. They 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 would probably come along. You pay the fee relevant to the size of the work. But here's the thing, how do they know you've got the right size joists in? They're gonna make you open it up. How do they know that you've got the right size insulation on your sloping roofs or your vertical walls? They're gonna make you open it up. So would you do that if it say the sale of your property? Then absolutely you should. But going back to the original point, I don't understand why people wouldn't do it because ignorance is, isn't the answer. And to, to, to follow up on that point, I saw a post on social media a couple of months ago where somebody posted saying that they were halfway through a job or nearly finished the job and building control have, have come in. They've seen works going on and they've stopped and, and knocked the door and said, oh, what's going on here? Uh, and this guy has put a post up saying, well, I live in the south and the job's in the north and I project managed it to a, a builder or a sourcer or whatever. And now the builders told me building regs have knocked the door. Um, and he said, well, why didn't the builder sort it out? Well, well, Mr. Customer, Mr. Builder. Client, Mr. Householder, you're, you're responsible. You know, there's a section in here that says non-compliance, £5,000 maximum fine for non-compliance. So, you know, I, I don't think ignorance is the answer because the, the, the person who ultimately will end up catching the cold is, is you, the, the property owner, not being able to sell it or, or having a, you know, you, technically you're not allowed to have anybody live in a property unless you've had a sign off. So you're breaching a lot of rules and regulations on the law if you don't do it. So yeah, we need it. it it's not very good, is it? I mean, let, let's put it like this. I mean, to sort of wrap this building regs 101 up, the, the way I'm 
hearing from you is this is an important piece of your compliance in order to ensure you can get remortgaged in order to ensure you can sell it you get your nhbc guarantee you can get uh all of the, the well, different well, things that you want to achieve i i sorry andrew i just, yeah. just interject there yeah if you if you're there's a slight confusion there on not on your point but on other people's points on you mentioned nhbc and this sort of goes into the realm of warranties. Yeah. So if, if you were NHBC, a predominantly new build. So if you are looking to get an NHBC self-build warranty certificate for mortgage purposes, you have the choice of using local authority, private, or the NHBC building regulation service. Okay, so they're sort of like a private building control. So in all honesty, just to clarify, if I were building a house and I was employing an NHBC registered builder to do that work for me, it would make sense to get the NHBC, the, the NHBC building inspector in because there's, there's continuity there. Yeah. And then, it, then all the paperwork flows and I've got an NHBC uh, building control, an NHBC warranty. There it goes to my mortgage provider, all the paperwork stacks up. Yeah, but, but yes, no. you're quite right. You could use a private or a local authority bill control service in conjunction with your warranty provider, yeah. which could be NHBC, or it could be the likes of me, because I, as, as a, a, a professionally indemnified professional, can, can oversee a new build projects, and I issue what we call a professional consultant certificate. And, and, and that's another, that's probably for another day about the six year and the 10 year. But that's another video for more of us. <laughs> no, absolutely. Well, you raise a great point. Uh, and I think it's really important that we build our buildings safe because I like to sleep at night and I like to ensure things are done properly. We put the right fire protection systems in and we look after people because although as property developers, investors, we like to make a profit. It should not be at the expense of somebody else's life. So that's the reason we're doing this. Uh, and it's very important we comply. Well, absolutely. You know, they, 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 all they say there's only one, there's, there's, there's the one way to do things is the right way, isn't it? You know, there's, you should never cut corners. And we, you know, we do know that there are some, um, uh, poor building builders out there and, and as much as there are really good builders out there I, I don't think I don't think the world really you know will, will put up with poor builders these days um, I'm, I'm sure I don't think anybody sets out with the intentions of, of being you know doing a bad job I, I really don't I wouldn't like to think that that a builder puts himself out there he's not really good at what he does I'm sure everybody's got their best intentions but on the building reg side of things, you know they are they're there to make sure things are done properly so so you know if, if the building inspector is not happy he's not going to sign off that phase of the work or he's not going to let the work progress until that item is corrected uh, and then ultimately uh, if your builder is not doing the work correctly and he decides to vacate the site because of then then that, that, that's his problem and it's your problem as well but I think I'd rather have a, a better quality builder on my project if I'm spending tens of thousands of pounds than, than some, you know, cowboy builder. If that's, oh, absolutely. You know, You'll also achieve a higher value on your exits or okay. valuations from a lender as oh. well. So why would you do a shoddy job? It's the only person you're kidding is yourself. No, so. Correct, correct, <laughs> correct. correct. But, Mike, it, it's been fantastic and phenomenal to have this chat and to tease out all of this detail for our audience. And I know that they're going to have really appreciated you. So they're going to very kindly put their thumbs up and share this post with their friends as well. And if they're not already subscribed, I'm sure they'll hit subscribe on this video. We'll drop some contact details here for getting a hold of Mike. Uh, and I believe mike we've twisted your arms to actually come back and and do another video with us shortly 
about an overview of the different parts to the building regs. Yeah, we can do that. We can do that. There, as I say, as I said earlier on, there are 16 parts to the building regulations. And you know, we we can, if, if people want, we can go through and just talk it, it, the basics of what each section are relevant to. Because you know, let's say you know we touch on part A structure, part B is fire. Um, fire is pretty straightforward in a dwelling um, because, because it's just about means of escape and the basics of fire alarms. And that's what it's about, giving early warning of fire. When it starts just getting into more complex buildings, um, you know, offices, multi-story buildings, fire escapes, that's when document B starts becoming quite complex. Uh, and just to, to, to give a highlight to some people, in Wales, as of last year, um, the Welsh Government saw fit to introduce something different that England have not got the benefit of at the moment, and that is in every new build, we must put sprinklers in. So we must That's put a, a phenomenal expense. In. It's not it's not cheap, and and the problem is Andrew, is um, our I recently done a new build, and the the static pressure of water was not sufficient to supply the sprinkler system. So, so Welsh Water, um, I, I love them, couldn't give me the pressure of water needed to supply my system. So I had to, uh, and, I, and I've done this uh, on a number of projects this, this last year now, uh, oversee the installation of tanks. So a water tank, depending on the size of the house, but the, the, the one that I personally did was a two bedroom bungalow and I had to put in a, a thousand litre tank in the garden. We buried it in the garden. Uh, uh, so we put a little manhole cover on it in the corner of the garden. It gets fed by the mains, it fills up. It's on a float system. So whenever um, any water is taken off of it, then, um, I, I, okay, so I, I might confuse people with that. So obviously, yes. no water is going to come out of the tank unless the alarm goes off. In the fire. <laughs> yeah. We hope that never happens. But if that never happens, then that water in that tank will become stagnant. So we have to put an outside tap on the property, which draws water off the tank. That keeps the, the water fresh, so that gets topped up by the mains, as well as having your mains into your house. So yeah, so thank you to the Welsh Government. Um, when, when it... Uh, has a fire we just hope that the electrics don't knock out the pump or, or the electrics don't get knocked out so the pump doesn't work absolutely absolutely yeah so um yeah so i i think this will be coming to an area near you soon so the welsh government they like to be ahead of the game they like to be progressive um so yeah so we've got sprinklers in so that's a a, a localized variation to the national building regulations in wales part b fire and, and as i said there's 16 other parts um not all are relevant the other one just to tweak is part p part p is that you're not allowed to do any alterations to the electrics in a property without telling building regulations you're a competent person doing this work changing a plate changing a light fitting is okay but if you do any alterations to the electrics then you need really to tell building regulations and put an application in. And we did a video all on the uh, building electric pull inspection checks, the EICRs uh, yeah. for your rental properties. And a link to that video is just up here so that you can pick up and watch that where we did an interview with uh, a, a NAPIT qualified electrician who explained in layman's terms exactly what was needed for you. Yeah, yeah. I think for today, Mike, we'll say goodbye to our audience and it's been great to have you join us. Any words of wisdom on this subject of Building Regs 101? No, I think we've covered it, Andrew. I just like to say a, a, a massive thank you to you um, for, for inviting me to do this video with you. I know you've had some excellent other professionals in your series. 
Um, but if anybody would like to get in touch with me, um, they can do it. It's, um, my own website is Mike Woods, a property expert. Um, and just to expand on that, you know, since my architectural background, I've been investing in property since the late 90s. So I have a, a property portfolio. So I, I build my own uh, property portfolio. I'm a, a developer and also um, I, I mentor people. So if anybody feels that they want to take their business to the next level, then they can either contact myself directly or through you, Andrew, uh, and I'd be more than happy to help people. It's about making sure people know what to do, how to do it best, and avoid making costly mistakes because thousands can be lost by making mistakes. So if we can, if we can get the right information out to the right people, and they know then that they're being uh, shown the right ways, then it works for me, Andrew. So thank you. Brilliant. Mike, thank you very much. It's goodbye from me, Andrew Roberts, and goodbye from yep. Mike Woods as well. Thank you very much, Cheers everybody. And thanks very much indeed. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.